In this talk, I'd like to present how uh, we were able to detect four tiny modifications in four modern IC designs with an image-based approach. So starting off, starting off, I'll explain some background of hardware trojans. Hardware trojans in general um, are malicious modifications in integrated circuits. The term was firstly introduced by the Department of Defense uh, report on high performance microchip supply in 2005. Hardware trojans could be introduced during manufacturing or even shipping of ICs. And one noteworthy uh, example of those modifications are either added or replaced uh, logic cells just before the manufacturing. This can, of course, undermine the security, integrity, trustworthiness, and availability of the whole devices. And the Department of Defense was specifically worried about manipulations in military-grade hardware. In our work, we focus on the following scenario. When designing and producing a chip, one, at one point the design is completed uh, and ready for the production. Then usually a contract manufacturer um, takes over to fabricate the actual wafers containing the chips. Um, outsourcing this manufacturing process is more affordable for smaller design houses. However, the fab, oh, sorry, the fab is uh, potentially in power of tampering with design data just before the manufacturing. At the same time, the transportation between production steps needs to be trusted. This is exactly the threat scenario the Department of Defense described. And to protect against this, the best would be that a trusted analysis lab uh, takes over and verifies that the chips actually are consistent with the respective design files. So our research question would be how efficient it is to detect functional hardware trojans in full-sized ICs of different technology sizes. To minimize any potential biases in Trojan detection, we strictly separated the researchers in a red and a blue team. The red team resembles a malicious third party inserting a hardware Trojan. In our specific case, uh, chips from different research process, projects had already been produced, so the evil red team used the trick here. Instead of inserting changes into the actual chips, they modified the design files um, instead in a way that similar differences exist between the design file and the chip, thus closely emulating the original scenario um, without the need for a second expensive production run. The previously manufactured chips and the manipulated design files were then handed to the blue team, which acted as an analysis lab um, aiming to detect the inserted manipulations. Now let's have a closer look at the chips and how the manipulations were introduced by the red team. These are the four research ICs we used in our case study. They have technology size of 90, 65, 40, and 28 nanometers, and they have sizes up to 2 by 2 millimeters as shown above. These uh, chips have been previously designed and manufactured for crypto research and are ideal because they contain much standard cell-based logic. This is also the reason for uh, modifying the design file instead, simply because the chips were already present for analysis. So typical uh, Trojan insertion consists of adding logic cells or replacing logic cells on a chip while uh, replaced cells appear a bit more stealthy than added cells. The red team em emulates the manipulations by modifying the design file of the already produced chips. So they could um, emulate additional cells by replacing existing cells with empty space in the design file or they could replace a cell type, for instance, a NOR gate with a NAND gate. In total, the red team introduced four additions and six replacements um, scattered all over the chip and placed randomly. 
So now the, that the preparation is done, the blue team can take over. The blue team re receives the physical chips and the design files from the red team and now needs to somehow verify the consistency. For that, first of all, the chips need to be imaged. For imaging, they need to be prepared beforehand. And as we are interested in the cell layout of the chip, where, which can be found on the bottommost layer, we start off by milling down some silicon from the backside of the IC. And uh, then uh, any remaining silicon is etched away. And in the third step, with a scanning electron microscope, the chips can be uh, imaged, resulting in uh, full images of the chip. This is, uh, however, a time-consuming um, process and is quite expensive. It can easily take one to two days to image one of our research ICs. So um, after imaging, high-resolution images of all the mm, chips were received. They consist of thousands of uh, individual tile images and are stitched together to form a large mosaic of the whole chip totaling to a file size of 300 gigabytes of uncompressed grayscale images with uh, resulting resolutions of down to 4.8 nanometers per pixel. When zooming in, when zooming in, um, individual um, rows of, of standard cells are shown and even the individual standard cells can be seen in quite high quality. Now that the blue team uh, has the images of the chip, they can process the images of every cell and compare them to the design file. First of all, the design file has to be overlaid over the image. This is done using a four-point matrix transformation. It needs to be accurate so every single cell is aligned um, almost perfectly. Then every cell can be cut out of the microscope image and then can be labeled with a cell type from the design file. Then these uh, cutouts can be fed into image processing algorithms. To find additional cells that could, should not be there according to the design file, one good option is to find wires. Wires contact functional cells to the routing layers above and appear as distinguishable bright white spots and can be detected using binary thresholding and correlation with some gradient. If, we, if um, wires can be detected, that means that the ca cell candidate cannot contain nothing. To be able to uh, detect cell replacements, however, this is not sufficient. With template matching, however, multiple instances of the cell, same cell type can be correlated against a good known sample. In this example, um, the first cell is considered as the golden reference model. And the second cell does look similar to the first one, so it won't get detected as a replacement. The third cell uh, instead looks quite different, so it uh, gets detected as a modification. For details of the, our algorithms, refer to our full paper. Now, how did our uh, detection algorithms perform over the whole four chips in our case study? All four chips contain between hundreds of thousands up to 1.5 million of cells. So our results show that uh, the algorithm can detect the inserted manipulations almost perfectly. Out of hundreds of thousands of cells, only 367 candidates were left over for manual evaluation. That can be done in a matter of minutes. All the additional cells couldn't be found with our algorithms, and also most of the replaced cells can be found. Only in three cases with the 28 nanometer chip, very similar looking cells could not be detected. Notably is that the total runtime of the unoptimized algorithms were in the matter of hours on my laptop computer. So this can be easily scaled up. Here are some of the detected cell replacements. On the top row, there are the golden references. And on the bottom row, there are actual cell instances. Though they look all rather different, it would be laborious work to find these among millions of other cells by hand. But not everything is perfect, as these images show. Here's some dust or debris uh, settled down on the chip samples, thus covering the cell layout. Reason here is that we had no clean room available for our imaging process, 
So uh, to solve this issue, these areas would have to be imaged a second time with a fresh chip, chip, chip sample. Here's an example of one of the three false negatives with a 28 nanometer chip. As one can see, these two cells are looking very similar. However, they are different. In order to find these as well, the threshold values for the template matching would be, need to be adapted, uh, such that the false positive rate increases dramatically, or the imaging quality needs to be raised. This showed only up with a 28 nanometer chip, so uh, increasing complexity of standard cell libraries with uh, shrinking feature size may play a role here. So this is where the limits with our current algorithms and imaging setup are. Probably improved algorithms may be based on machine learning, or images from a better SEM environment could improve that. To conclude, giving a sufficient image quality, it's possible to detect uh, such hardware trojans that were inserted just before the manufacturing step. Additional cells can be detected straightforward, while replaced cells lead to a bit more problems in smaller and more, more complex uh, chip technologies. Even smallest hardware trojans, only tampering with a single cell, can then be spotted using classical image, uh, image processing algorithms. I would also emphasize that we released all the chip images, anonymized design files, and our algorithms for further research in this area in our GitHub repo. Thanks for your attention. Now I'm happy to answer your questions. Questions? If the red team had limited themselves to changes that only affected the doping rather than the metal, would you have detected those? No. Uh, using these uh, scanning electron microscope technologies, uh, usually you are not able to detect these straightforward. However, there are special um, imaging technologies that could image them as well. As far as I know, there was some research for this as well. Uh, however, the most basic type of hardware trojans can be detected using our algorithms. Any other question? So what did you release uh, again? What do you have? You are releasing all the images and the algorithm and everything? Right. Uh, all the 300 gigabytes of image data and all the GDS2 design files, however, reduced to uh, have the confidentiality of the uh, chip producers and, so, um, and such, and also all the code, uh, which is Python code uh, using OpenCV. So that means that the community has the ability to try other techniques and uh, right. also to try if they can evade your approach, right? <laughs> <laughs> With new types of uh, uh, Trojans. Mm -hmm. So that opens up the um, the door for attackers to do the same thing. Right. <laughs> okay. Oh, well. Hi, uh, Michele Marazzi from ETH Zurich. So thank you, very nice presentation. I was wondering about uh, the feature size because I know for SEM it's quite limited, the minimum you can reach, uh, but maybe you can tell me more if you consider this or if you have an estimation of uh, what's the minimum feature size that you could be able to image. Thank so you. as you can see, uh, with 28 nanometers, we still have some problems with our current setup. Um, I know there are devices that can, so scanning electron microscopes with higher resolution specifically made for chip analysis. However, we didn't have access to these as they are quite expensive, going into the millions of the US dollars. And uh, so with our current setup, that is the limit, but yeah, maybe you can go down to lower structure sizes as well. Um, keeping in mind that the producers themselves also have the ability to uh, verify uh, if the chip production runs smoothly. Maybe it's just taking longer than or something like that. <laughs>